Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to this Care Leaders Network podcast. My name's Simon. I'm the founder and chief executive of CLN. And today we are recording a, a leadership insights conversation. I'm delighted to be welcomed uh, by Marianne Wonstall, uh, the chief executive of the Brendan Care Foundation. It's lovely to see you here to, uh, today. and Looking forward to getting stuck into the conversation. Thanks, Simon. It's good to see you too. So uh, this has been a little bit of a long time coming. We started talking about this a little while ago, and then there were various different reasons why we couldn't get the conversation booked. So I'm very pleased to, to be having this conversation with you today. Um, so without further ado, let's get stuck into the into the question. So number one question, though, we know where we're starting. So in your mind, do you believe that are leaders born or are they made? Yeah, I think it's a really good question. I mean, I think while some people do seem to have natural leadership skills really inherently, actually, I'm probably more uh, of the view that leaders are made because a, a large part of what makes uh, a good leader, a, a, either a really good or a great leader, is what they learn. It's how they uh, look at what they've experienced. It's how they make mistakes. Uh, and it's how they build on what they see around them. And it's how they use other people as uh, examples or role models. And all of that informs your process. So I, I, I don't, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that people don't have strong skills that make them good leaders. But I think on the whole, leaders are much more likely to be crafted in their success than they are to just inherently have all of those, all of those uh, areas of skill and expertise. Mm. When you say things like crafted, I think about almost like forged. It's, it's almost like the, the 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 leader has to go through kind of the process of the the highs and the lows and the stresses and the excitement and all of those things to to learn how to conduct oneself in a leadership capacity. For sure. Yeah. And any leader who tells you they've never had to go through some pain is is frankly lying or they're not doing it right, to be honest, because I think that's that's what makes. And in fact, I, you know, we'll probably talk about that at some point about, you know, the challenges of leadership, because that's that's a big part of it. It's not plain sailing. And part of it is how you learn to adapt, how you learn to uh, yeah, how you learn to learn, how you learn to look at what you've done and to go, yeah, that was a bit of a train wreck. How can I do that better next time? And 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 actually, what does that tell me? And and how does that inform what I do going forward? Mm, definitely looking forward to getting stuck into the detail. So, uh, OK, so relevant to that, then uh, in your mind is leadership. Is it more of an art or is it more of a science? And why do you have the perspective that you that you have? So I'm definitely not a scientist by trade. So you won't be surprised if I tell you that I think leadership is an art. Um, it's very much my background. And the reason that I think that is because when you're talking about leadership, you're talking about people. It's all about people. It's all about how you bring people with you. It's about how you influence, how you engage, how you motivate. Um, it isn't just about making decisions uh, and, and using data or, you know, uh, insights to, to give you that. And if you're dealing with people, you've got to really... Uh, be continually adapting because every single person is different so to bring out each person's inner brilliance which for me is what leadership is all about it's about getting the people around you to, to really shine and to succeed if you're going to do that then you have to take a different approach pretty much with every single person that you engage with so with that in mind you there, there's no way of being scientific in my view you're going to continually be looking at uniqueness and individuality and and having to engage in subtly different ways with each of the 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 people that you deal with for me that's one of the great joys my senior leadership team for example is made up of a number of very different personalities and i'm delighted if we were all the same it would be really dull but what i enjoy is that it, it stretches me to function differently for them to succeed the way i work with them is different in every single instance um and that i hope is what allows them to to be successful at what they do because actually i'm there to enable them and their individuality to you know to to really shine and to really sort of to really step out so that for me is why it's a very this is something that's much more about um it's much more intuitive and it's much more around what you learn and how you feel things than it is more about that sort of scientific uh definition and and sort of st statistics of how you do it Sure, that makes sense. One of the things that you said in there I really enjoyed, I can't remember exactly how you phrased it now, but something about bringing out people's inner brilliance. I think that's fantastic because you want to have brilliant team members, but sometimes they maybe they don't see their their, their, their own brilliance. Maybe people have good and bad days and things like that. And the, the, the practical application of how to do that on a consistent basis to, to help people to bring their 
uh, everything that they've got into their kind of professional capacity and things like that to, so that they have their own, they, they're almost like optimizing or maximizing their own performance and fulfillment as a result of being successful and all that type of stuff, I think is, uh, uh, I can see why you've framed that in the context that you have relevant to it being more of an artistic endeavor than a, than a scientific one. So, so thank yeah. you for that. Absolutely. I mean, I think that to me, that's really key. And I think, you know, to that piece around uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a well used phrase, isn't it? You know, you don't employ good people to tell them what to do. You employ them to tell you what they can do. But, you know, I, I know I'm my I'm my own worst critic and other people will be similar. And you need people outside of, of your perception to shine a light on the things that you are good at. And you need those people to make sure that, you know, actually, they help you pave a way to allow you to be the best that you can be and to bring your best game each day. And um, for me, that's a key part of what I'm here to do. I'm, I'm not here to tell people what to do. I'm here. I'm here to make their life easy and to make it work so that all of the great stuff that they can bring, they're able to. And, and that way they succeed. And so do we. Like it. Thank you for sharing your perspective on that. Talk to me about the difference between management and leadership. Yeah, I think that's quite a simple one, but it's one that very often gets really confused. For me, management is uh, is just about getting stuff done. It's making things happen. And it's just about, you know, it's it's quite a directive. It's quite a functional approach to, to work um, and, and very much, you know, day to day activity in an organisation uh, is just around managing. It's managing people's capacity and their time and the tasks that they've got to do. Leadership is something totally different. Uh, and for me, it's a much more. Um, I would describe it as a much more emotional function and as a much more emotional response and, and, and requirement than it is a, um, if you like, a, a functional or a practical one. Uh, it's about enabling people. It's about empowering them. It's about inspiring them. It's about motivating. It's about giving people a different perspective about what's possible. Um, it's about setting a direction in a way that is bringing people with you. So it's not about... Um, a directive approach, which is, uh, you know, I tell you to jump and you ask me how high it is all about going. This is where we're going. This is the journey that we're on. This is how we're going to do this. What part do you play? So it's also it's a very two way piece. Uh, the best leaders I've worked with are the ones who engage in that dialogue around. Actually, this is the journey. You know, where what's your role? What do you need from me to make that happen? And how do we do this together? How do we do this together? I think that's a that's a great question for 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 leaders to constantly be be asking them themselves because you have to it's symbiotic. You have to work together to overcome things. Um, they they say you can go. What is it? You can go far on your loan uh, alone. Um, what is it? I can remember the. I can't remember the uh, the 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 uh, the, the uh, analogy. Forgive me. I'll have to uh, to go back and double check one. But it's basically one that you can achieve a certain level of success on your own, but it takes uh, a team to be able to chill, uh, achieve some like level of magnificence, whatever that that that, that yeah. is. Um, I'm sure somebody will be able to uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 remind me exactly what that one is. But hopefully, the sentiment is there, none the uh, nonetheless. So, Absolutely. at what point do you think somebody becomes a leader? I don't think there's a particular point in time. I've seen kids on a rugby pitch be great leaders. I've seen senior people in massive organisations be terrible leaders. So I'm not sure there's any particular, and you know, people after a really long career as well. So I'm not sure there's any particular point in time. I think if I was going to define it, it would be, it's that point when um, you're not trying anymore. You're, it comes naturally, that ability to influence, that ability to bring people with you, that ability to motivate people. So, you know, you can you can have a really great career background and a really great set of skills, but not be a particularly good leader uh, and still be stuck in management. Uh, and I've seen that. I've seen people in very senior roles essentially still be managers. They're just managers who've been overpromoted. Um, and, and they don't have those that sort of level of connection and intuition that I think you need to see leaders really move forward. So for me, it's more about when do you get to that point? So really, I'm not sure there's ever a point anybody wakes up and goes, today, I am now a leader. You know, I, I don't think it quite works that way. There's definitely an evolution. Um, but if I were to put a point on it, that for me is when I would say that's, you know, when you're behaving in that way, when it comes very naturally to you, that you're very comfortable in that space of this is what I am here to do. This is my role. This is my place. This is how I use it. And this is how I bring people with me. I think it's at that point. If you if you get to that point, you're, you're leading. Great. Thank you. There are, of course, 
many misconceptions about leaders. What would you say the most common misconceptions are about leaders and also about leadership? So probably the one that's obvious is, you know, that leaders are managers. Definitely not. A manager might end up being a leader, but leading is not about managing. We've talked about that. Um, I think for me, one of the other ones that's a real common misconception is that leaders have all the answers. Um, uh, I'm very much at pains to tell people that I work with that I don't have all of the answers. That's why they're there. Um, so that collectively we we have all of the answers. And in fact, I'm very clear that Ruff and I don't have the answer and I don't have the knowledge and th that I need people like them to bring their expertise. So I think that's one of the, um, uh, you know, one of those preconceptions. I think the other one is around um, uh, leadership having power. And, and, you know, that it gives you that right of autonomy and decision making and that, you know, if you're the leader of an organization, you have a huge amount of, of power and influence. And that might be true, um, but uh, it isn't that simple. It's never that black and white. There's definitely uh, a piece around uh, you have to think really hard around how you do it successfully and you have to be very considered in what it looks like. I didn't set out to be a leader of an organization because I wanted to be in charge of an organization. Actually, what I just wanted to be able to do was to make a difference. And, and my view of leadership is one which is much more around leadership in service. So I'm here to help others. And if I help others, then they will succeed and they will do well. I don't see my role as being one of telling people and directing what happens. Yes, I make decisions and you have to be able to make decisions. Um, but I don't think for me, that preconception that is, you know, leaders are all knowing, uh, all powerful. Um, and I think if you start to believe that as an agenda, you're in trouble. Um, because if you start to believe that as a, as a perspective, that's when, you know, the wheels start to come off. If you think you're, you're bigger and better than what it is you're here to do, um, then I think you're really at risk. I think there's a really big shift in um, uh, in the way that I've I look at leadership and how I was led when when I was younger, uh, I spent I felt like I spent an awful lot of time getting told what to do very, 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 mm. very prescriptively. Yeah. Um, and something that I'm I didn't really appreciate that when I was when I when I was younger, I, I, I try really, really hard to try and avoid that as as much as as much as humanly possible. And it comes back to that uh, question that you asked earlier, something along the lines of uh, how can we work together to achieve X, Y, Z outcome? It's it, 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 it's it's reciprocity you know it's it's symbiotic it's working together to achieve the objectives of the of the overall strategy rather than being like this is your job this is what you do this is again being prescriptive etc so uh i yeah i i i'm on board with you in that respect um talk to me about the difference between a good leader and a great leader yeah, gosh, I mean, you know, it'd be good to just have, you know, lots of people aspiring to be good leaders, but great leaders, I think, uh, you know, are always really, really up there. I mean, I think a good leader is somebody who can really inspire confidence, who makes people feel comfortable, they know where they are, um, they're clear. Uh, I think all of that is really positive. You, you know, a good leader um, shows a real level of understanding and gives people that sense of confidence in what they do. A great leader will probably push somebody outside of their comfort zone. Um, for all of the right reasons. And that's why it's a real challenge, because you have to be able to um, take people with you on a journey that they may not want to be on uh, or they don't realise is the right one to be on. And that can be risky. Um, and and you've got to you've got to be really you know, you've got to be really clear as the leader in your ability to bring that person or those people with you. But I think the great leaders are the ones who push us, the ones who push us to be better, who set an example uh, that is something we aspire towards, who behave in a certain way. And, and for me, um, when I think about people who, you know, I, I look to as role models who've inspired me in the past, it's not been to do with what they do. It's been everything to do with how they do it and how they approach it. So there's definitely something around uh, looking at, at how people work and encouraging them to work differently, because in the difference is the magic. Um, I think, you know, very often we can all follow a, a well-trodden path uh, that we know is safe and we know will lead us to where we need to go and it will, you know, uh, that will work for us. But sometimes it's taking the different route, which is where you'll find something really exceptional and really extraordinary. And these days, in highly competitive environments, whether you're in a commercial environment or a not-for-profit environment like we are here at Brendan Care, 
um, I think you know, you know, though you will always need to be looking for those little little gems of something a little bit different. And that's where a great leader can really make a difference. They're people also who really recognize value. Uh, we all need recognition and we all need to get that sense of when we're doing something well. And a, a great leader is one who is never, uh, never above being able to say thank you, never being above, never above sort of appreciating what people bring, whether that's a huge contribution or a small contribution, but recognizing them all equally. That's, in my view, really great leadership, because that's just demonstrating how much everybody plays a part in, in the success of an endeavor, a project, an organization. Um, you know, if, if the leader recognizes that just as much as, you know, uh, as we, you know, the, the small bits as well as the big bits, that's essential because that's what brings those people along. And that's what will ensure that they continue to to contribute, to want to do more, to flourish. You know, it becomes a, you know, a, a very rewarding, you know, it's a self-fulfilling uh, success on that basis. So I think those for me are the key the key factors for me in terms of, you know, if you, you know, really, really great leaders are the ones, you know, they don't necessarily make life easy for you. They're going to push you. They're going to make it challenging at times. They're going to ask something of you. Um, and if they're good at it, they'll, they'll never push you too far, uh, but they'll push you enough to really, you know, really allow you to, to do something brilliant. And, and, um, and they'll, and they'll tell you how much they appreciate it as well. That last point, I think, is an important one as, as well, isn't it? Just the appreciation side of things, because if you're working in a leadership capacity, to your point, you're usually dealing with some type of adversity in one shape or another. You're almost always going to be in a set of circumstances or at least consistency, reasonably consistently in a set of circumstances where even if the the scenario isn't maybe difficult the expectation to drive that person might be over and above their current capacity, capability, et cetera. So to be able to push them to the right level so that they can grow as a person, um, but then make sure that their that that growth is because growth is hard. Let's be completely honest yeah. about it. It's, it's, it's always a it's always a difficult process. Recognizing that. I think is is really really key so I like the I like the way that you rounded that off that's uh, that's good um what would you say the three most important characteristics of leadership are so I think uh oh gosh just three it's gonna be quite tricky really I mean key things with leadership for me is around the ability to take people with you so what that's going to need is really really good communication skills you you need you need somebody who uh, is really able to connect with people who can ensure that they understand exactly what the direction of an organization or, or you know, a group of people is, um, who can make it really easy for them to understand what's expected of them and make them want to do that. So all of that, that, that piece around communication is absolutely key, that ability to interact and function in a way and communicate in a way that, that works for people. I think that's really key. Secondly, for me, it's about honesty and openness. If you are not um, completely uh, transparent about what it is that you seek to achieve, and 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 with that also being yourself, being being your your you know your authentic self, um, you will never take people with you. People are smart. They people spot people who aren't being themselves very fast, uh, and uh, and and they need to know. Uh, and they deserve your honesty. You know, that's a, a fairly basic principle of respect. If you're not being honest with somebody, you're not really respecting them. So, you know, actually, it's it's a minimum, really, that people should expect that the the, the people who lead them actually are honest um, and uh, and that they show some level of integrity. So I think that that's very key. Uh, you can't ask people to do stuff you don't believe in. You can't ask people to to walk down a path you're not prepared to to work on yourself. So you know, actually, you've got to be able to to be honest in your approach and your attitude. And I think you have to be honest in terms of you know that that transparency of this is what it's going to take. It might not be easy. There might be steps we've got to go through together that are going to be more challenging. And this is why. But this is why it's important for us to to to, to walk this path together. So I think those those are all really key. And finally, if you're going to if you're going to make me only stick to three um, energy, you've got to have energy to do this. Nobody ever sat there and said great leaders were really quiet and passive and didn't do stuff. Oh, there are one or two, but they really are the exceptions. You know, actually, um, you know, you need to have energy. You need 
to be able to pick yourself up even on the really difficult days and bring enthusiasm and positivity and energy. And you have to be quite often, particularly as you will often be in situations where people are going, well, we can't do that or it's too hard or it's going to be too complicated or it's going to be too expensive where you're the one going let's find a solution how do we find a solution how do we come how do we take that forwards how do we work together to make that happen so you have to bring that energy energy definitely interestingly nobody's ever mentioned energy before maybe implicitly in the things that they've described but not explicitly um there are three different type of types of energy i remember being taught this by a a, a, a by a, a like a uh, uh, like a coach consultant um gosh it must have been thick end of 10 years ago now there are three different types of energy there are there's negative energy there's neutral energy and then there's uh positive upwards energy neutral energy might as well be negative energy because if you leave somebody feeling flat um you might as well leave them feeling bad about the set of circumstances because they're too close the ability to be able to draw out positive energy from somebody particularly in a different uh in a different um, in a difficult set of circumstances um, is is hard. And I guess that relates back to the um, drawing out the brilliance of, uh, of yeah. uh, as well. That yeah, you, you have to, you, you're right. I mean, you know, I suspect most of us bring a lot of, you know, a lot of energy and, and, and drive to, to, to what we do. But um, you, you, you have to choose your attitude. I think if you're going to be successful at what you do, you, you have to choose your attitude every day. And, and certainly I find myself thinking about this every time I step into certain meetings, uh, certain environments, you know, you know, you have to kind of think about actually, you know, what is it, what do I want from this? Um, and how do I, how do I make sure that I bring success to what it is we seek to achieve out of, out of whatever it is I'm doing today. And that takes effort um, and effort requires energy. So at a fairly fundamental level, you you know, if you really want to bring your A game every day, you're going to have to be energetic in how you do it because you're going to have to consider the position that you need to take. You're going to have to consider the mindset. You're going to have to, I, most days I will be adapting and bringing a different, a different attitude and a different perspective to my day. And some days that might be that I, it, you know, it's appropriate for me to bring a more laid back, a more relaxed, a more, you know, a less frantic I'm, I'm sure my team would tell you they wish they saw more of that from me um uh, and uh and you know maybe less of the come on let's do more sort of thing but but you have to if you're if you are proactively consciously every day uh adapting and adjusting how you position yourself your mindset your attitude uh, and and the vibe that you give off then you know you've got to put energy into it mm. We could have a whole conversation, I think, about probably about energy. I'm mindful, yeah. of, mindful, mindful of time, though. Maybe that's a, an, another podcast within of itself. Um, okay, what about energy? Energy in the workplace? Why not? Putting putting the um, putting the right vibes for the right set of circumstances, I think, is uh, a, a, a really, really interesting, really, really, really interesting point. That's going to be one that I'm going to I'm going to go away and think about. I, t I tend to try and draw something from each uh, episode that I record as well to go and give some con serious consideration to. So. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be my takeaway from today. So thank you for that one. Um, talk to me about how leadership is evolving over time. Yeah, I think, I mean, you touched, you alluded to it earlier, um, uh, that piece around where probably some of us in our younger days, you know, our expectation of, of leaders and organisations was was a very directive, autocratic, um, uh, you know, uh, you, you will do what I ask you to do, no more, no less sort of thing. And certainly I can remember in my earlier days hearing people talking about the fact that they felt that, you know, uh, a good leader, uh, you know, a, a good level of leadership was something that looked like a, a benevolent dictatorship. And, and I'd, I think I'd be fairly clear in saying I feel we've moved quite a long way from that. I think there's a lot less emphasis on, uh, if you like, a strength based approach, a, a command and control approach um and worrying about being very directive and very if you like um black and white maybe around deliverables this is what we must do this is what we're here to achieve here right you know and it's not to say that deliverables and targets aren't important but i think how you go about achieving them is probably what's changed in terms of leadership uh we see a lot more soft skills these days the importance of empathy with people the importance of kindness um, uh, one of our values here um, at Brendan Care is all around kindness. And it's because actually we recognise how incredibly uh, valuable it is to recognise people and to take into account things that they've got going on and to support them. But kindness is also around um, helping people be the best that they can be. And sometimes that means having an honest conversation um, in a way that maybe, you know, being nice is one thing, being kind is a whole other thing. So, um, so I think there's something around empathy and kindness 
Um, and I think also um, being much more values driven, I hear far more people talking around the values that prompt them to be uh, leaders and good leaders. You know, it's around making sure that you're doing something that connects to what you believe in and to what matters to you, because if you do, you will, by definition, bring more of yourself. Um, uh, and, uh, and I think also there's something much more of a uh, if you like a bottom up style uh, of leading and a much more of a collaborative style of leading than than perhaps we used to see i think we see less we see people talking a lot less about a sort of top down hierarchical structure and more around how actually you engage and discuss and and work collaboratively to achieve success so i think those are probably some of the, the key things i think that i see differently these days kindness i think can be a superpower it really, really can. And it's it's not just the fact that being kind is a a worthwhile characteristic to uphold generally as, as, uh, on a personal level, as a professional level. But I think that it can be, yeah, it's a superpower in as much as the fact that um, it can be uncommon. Obviously, it shouldn't be, but it can be un uncommon. But I think it's practical in as much as the fact that if you've got people being kind to each other, and I, I, I love your point around the difference between being nice and being kind that those two things are all wet. like there's a there's a void yeah. in between those two worlds and I think they're often uh conflated I think the biggest thing about being kind is it, it's about being honest with yeah. with well I I I uh uh if if you're nice you can often shy away from the honesty side of things yeah. you can make people feel better in the moment but in a long term uh because maybe you're worried about their feelings or anything like that if exactly. you can deliver a negative message kindly but honestly and to be able to talk about the dynamics of that set of circumstances that's like that's a real conversation that is right there and that's and that's exactly. that's really really kind nice i it, it controversially like uh it's not that i don't appreciate niceness as a, 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 a as, as, as a characteristic but if i had the choice between somebody being kind and somebody being nice i'd choose kind 100 percent of the absolutely and you're absolutely right i mean you know certainly in, a, in an organizational um, environment um you're not being kind to somebody if you're not helping them recognize where they may need to look at their skill set where they may need to develop where it would help them and benefit them to be approaching something in a different way if you ignore that um you you know you might be worried about hurting their feelings but but you're not helping them you're not allowing them to succeed actually and that's where that piece around honesty and and we, we're spending a lot of time at the moment talking around how do we help people have really honest conversations and how do we make sure they have them at the right point in time and not leave it too late and how do we give people the confidence to sit down and have those really great conversations so that actually you know your people feel when something is put in front of them that is something that maybe they need help to work on, that they they very much receive that as a positive. And then I think the piece around, goodness me, if we were all just that little bit kinder, what the world would look like, you know, aspirationally, I think is really, really important. Kindness is a, it, it's a, it's um a, an amazingly sort of, it creates this fantastic virtuous circle. And I don't mean that in the sense that if I'm nice to somebody, I feel good about myself, but actually if I'm nice, if I'm kind to somebody, if I exhibit kindness in a fairly, you know, uh, it can be in a very simple way, it doesn't have to be too complicated, you recognize then that people will also behave differently back to you. You will get a different set of behaviors going on and that's where you get that people bring in them their best selves because suddenly they want to because suddenly actually it's a really positive and engaging feeling and you know kindness is very quickly reciprocated it's very unusual that you're kind to somebody and they're really horrible back you know usually kindness drives kindness um and, and that's why i think it's so important you know and, and and as you say it's a superpower it it has huge huge potential for good i like that I like that a lot. I love the uh, the, the summarization as uh, as well. Uh, so so yeah, thank you for that. Um, as a leader, of course, you will have faced challenges. Um, what are the greatest challenges that you've experienced as a leader, and what have you learned as a consequence? I think the the the, the biggest challenges they're not they're not sort of. Um, they're not the they're not the projects they're not the big pieces of work they're 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 you know trying to effect cultural change they're trying to um encourage and create an environment where people can behave differently and and, and you know to to move an organization forwards and and i think those are probably um they're they're probably the hardest situations to uh, to work in because 
change people automatically feel uncomfortable with change we, we're not we're creatures of habit uh, as human beings we like you know we sit in the same place we like to you know we like to have our desk at work we like to have the same chair we don't like it if somebody puts another chair in our room uh you know we're, we're very very much creatures of habit and if you start thinking about habits start thinking about where do i park when i go to the supermarket where do i stand when i catch the train on the platform you know we all tend to do the same behaviors we're you know we, we are very much creatures of habit so change is hard by definition we're anxious about change um so that whole piece is you're always starting a little bit from you know from uh, you've got to bring people with you and and probably the things i've really learned around that because it can be really hard um there's a few things one is you can't can't dictate the pace at which you make it happen i think there's a point where you know you could you could write the world's best organizational cultural change program and say you're going to deliver the whole thing within a year and you you can never say that because you don't know how each individual that you're working with is going to react respond how they're going to influence each other uh in a cohort of colleagues um and so you've got to be i think prepared to be adaptable in your timetable and your time scales of what it is that you seek to achieve within reason um uh, and then alongside that and i think it's really important i think the other thing is is, is learning that to, to stay on track so having just said all of that stuff about being adaptable about time scale there is something around not about necessarily the timing but around um sticking to what you believe is right i've definitely been uh in environments where it's been really really hard and where you know i've had days where i've sat there going god oh, actually am i really doing the right thing is this really is this really right um and and it would be it would be really understandable sometimes under that level of pressure to just go maybe this is just a, a bit too difficult maybe we dilute it maybe we scale it back and what i've learned is no no st stick with what you're doing stay with it, work through it. Yes, there is some pain here. But if what you've done up front in terms of your preparation, your development, your understanding of what it is that you seek to achieve, then you will get there. Um, you know, and even if something comes in out of left field and seeks to derail you, you will get there. So don't don't give up on it. You know, d you know, if you've done the groundwork right, even if it's really hard, it's worth pursuing and it's worth stick seeing it through. And, and I would very much advocate that is you know sometimes when it's really tough it would be easy to go yeah maybe it's too difficult haven't got enough time need to move on um but that doesn't pay off in the long run not for something around whole scale cultural shift in an organization where you need people to be behaving really differently and that for me is my in in my career those have been the most difficult things to deal with about how you take people in a different direction i guess there's um i was whilst you were describing that i was thinking about what you were saying. And I was thinking to myself, like it, it's, it, you have to be tenacious in that set of circumstances. You almost have to be, uh, and I, I don't feel like this is necessarily the right word, but hopefully you'll appreciate the, uh, the, the almost the sentiment. You almost need to be ruthless in that, in that respect as well, because you're, you'll look like the, the, the purpose of fulfilling whatever cultural change uh, agenda it is you're looking to try and uh, try and achieve. Like it, it's, it's mission critical you know, it has to be done. And there are always going to be difficult sets of circumstances that will happen as a as a result of that. So um, again, I don't know whether ruthless is necessarily the exactly the right that word, but it's maybe somewhere in between that and kind of being tenacious because it because it's of such significance and importance. It's 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 um it's important to not compromise. Yeah. When the, when the outcome of uh the 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 cultural transformation is of again of such such yeah. such significance. Yeah. I don't know whether I'm, that well, but as long, I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that you appreciate kind of what I was. I, I wasn't quite able to put the words that I was thinking in my mind into into uh, the, the the vocabulary. But uh, now, I, I think <laughs> something around that kind of piece around kind of dogged determination. I mean, you know, yeah, you know, a, a good leader is somebody who's always going to learn how to adapt to circumstance. But sometimes there are things you have to do that you have just got to. You've got to stick with, you know, and you've got to see them through. And um, and I think you know in in those cases when you really feel and funny enough i would almost go so far as to say that the point at which you're feeling the most pressure is the point in which it's most important to, to continue going forwards because the reason you're feeling the pressure is that probably what you're doing is working because it's starting to it's starting to have impact and it's starting to have influence change will always go through a period of pain uh, it is very unlikely any one of us would live through any experience of substantial change in how we live or how we work without it feeling somehow uncomfortable at least 
Um, and I'm not saying that I seek to kind of inflict discomfort on people, but I think, you know, there is a, you know, there is a real recognition around what well, let's look, we can, you know, we need to work through this and let's recognize that we might feel uncomfortable, but recognize that actually that's telling us something uh, and we can learn from it uh, and that it can move us forwards because we need to, you know, we need to, we need to understand how we, how we move this on and how we do it better. So I think all of those things come together in that. There's a, there's a, there's a, brilliant book which i'll 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 advocate to anyone that does any type of uh uh hard endeavor which is basically everyone that i speak to probably um uh, it's a book called um uh, do the work by a chat called stephen pressfield so stephen okay. pressfield is a, a very successful author but he decides to write a book uh, about um he refers to it as a as, as as resistance it is a force that it is around all of us that is the the reason why you procrastinate, the reason why uh, you you won't execute, the reason the kind of almost like the excuses that you give to yourself to not execute upon the 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 the, the purpose and the vision of what it is you set out to to achieve, and this uh, this resistance can come in all sorts of forms. It's the it's the the the, the maybe the colleague that doesn't think they think that. that think that the, the 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 plan can be executed or the family member that doesn't believe in your uh, aspirations for yourself or your own mind dumbing down your own human capability or anything like that uh yeah for anyone that does anything hard it's a little uh, it's a relatively short book but it i think about it a lot when i'm when you're having those moments with yourself when you're kind of thinking to yourself god this is hard this is yeah. <laughs> but it, it's that reminder that resistance is it it's 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 omnipresent yeah and the professional goes to work that's the point do the work uh the professional goes to work and you just show up you show up you do what you need to do on a day by day basis you break it down into its component parts and you will get to the outcome whatever that outcome might might be the most important thing is that you just don't give up yeah exactly oh that's one for my reading list clearly it's a great book it's definitely a great book again ad advocate that one you'll find it on amazon it'll probably cost you less than 10 quid but uh, i guarantee yeah, it's 10 times that much good stuff Talk to me about um, which leaders inspire you the most personally. Oh, so um, I think that those. So there's a few. There's there's probably a few things, and and uh, I, I wasn't sure if you were asking me specifically around individuals, very specific individuals. But um, for me, the leaders who really inspire me, they're ones who really show their passion who really show that why they love what they do. That's really, really, much. I can remember years ago going to um, a conference and one of the speakers was, his name escapes me, but he founded the Yo Sushi chain uh, originally in the UK. Um, and I rem and he talked about how he hit upon the idea of Yo Sushi, how, how he got the idea. Um, and the way he talked about it, was you could see that this was something that literally when the idea, he had this kind of light bulb moment of this is something that he'd seen in Japan and he could see how it could work over here. Um, and, um, uh, you know, now it feels a bit different. But when Yo Sushi first happened, there was nothing like that at all. So but the way he talked about how the idea came to came to be and how he set about it, and, and I'm sure behind that was, you know, hundreds of hours of hard work but he just had this extraordinary passion and enthusiasm for what a, what he perceived to be this extraordinarily brilliant idea and he was clearly right um and so i thought that for me is really motivational when you see people really exude that this is what this can be um sense that's really key i think um with that comes again that piece around authenticity. You believe in, you'll trust in the people you know. You're seeing the genuine person. You know people have a good sense of that. Uh, I think those who've inspired me would be those who haven't been afraid to do things differently. And then, lastly, probably for me most of all, uh, the leaders in me in my life personally, the ones who've probably inspired me the most were the ones who believed in me probably before I believed in myself, and who gave me that space and that scope to bring more and to show what I could do um, and who, and who, yeah, yeah. Who helped me to, to, to sort of become the best that I can be. And I see it as payback. I got that opportunity from the leaders that I was fortunate to be around earlier in my career. And, and I hope that that's something that I can then, you know, pay back to uh, whoever's coming behind me. This link, this question links perfectly to uh, to, to, to to that. Um, uh, in as much as the fact that you talk about the the leaders that have inspired y you and that have given you kind of um, 
energy and insight, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what would you say the best piece of leadership advice is that you've ever been given? It's probably three. Um, uh, the first one for me would be know your calling. And I and I use that word advisedly because for me, I do feel called to do what I do. I don't, I you know, I think you've, you, you need to make a decision. If you're going to be really, really good at what you do and you're going to make a positive difference, you need to be very comfortable that you're doing something that works for you, that you connect with, that you relate to, that is in tune with your values and then what you believe in. So know your calling. And I was I was given that advice really early doors. I was about 19 or 20 and somebody said to me, think really hard about where you think you should be, you know, and, 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 you know, where you think you should spend your time and your energy and what you believe you are here to do. So I think that was, that's really key from that. And then linked into that two other really fundamental pieces of advice from my perspective. One is trust your instincts, go with your instincts, 99% 99% of the time they'll be spot on so you know yes fine reflect but go with your instincts trust your instincts if something doesn't feel right it probably isn't um you know and and and, and make sure you really test that feeling and finally for me use your voice don't be afraid to uh take your place and use your voice you know we all have a voice make sure you use it to best effect and hopefully for, for you know for the forces of good um but use your voice uh, don't be afraid to to bring the expertise and 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 make sure people listen. Yeah, being able to articulate um, your perspective to be able to encourage a, a team to be able to align people, all of that type of stuff. Yeah, using that skill of being an orator is uh, uh again that's another that's another superpower, isn't it? I think that's yeah. that's good to say. So, okie doke. Last question. So you're standing at a lectern uh, in front of a room of aspiring leaders and you've got one minute to inspire them. What do you say? Um, I think I'd probably start by saying that uh, remember that, you know, there's everyone has a, a period of time or there will always be points in time when people don't know what they're doing. And that's fine. You know, it's absolutely fine to not know. And it's actually fine to tell people that you don't know, you know, and I think we should never shy away from that. Actually, you know, that encourages you to find people who can help you find the answers and bring in good people. So if you're going to be a good leader, it's okay to go. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Um, And uh, today on this one, I need you to come with me. And that's how we get to the answer together. So I think that's one. The other one would be sometimes, you know, that the crazy ideas are the best ones. So, you know, don't be don't be afraid sometimes to really step out of the box and try something completely different, Uh, because in those moments of madness, some of them will crash and burn and you'll learn from them. And that's fine. But in those moments of madness, find something glorious and run with it, because just every so often you'll get something fantastic and it will move you forwards. Uh, And then I probably really just want to say, be authentic, be kind and have fun. If you're not having fun, go home now. Uh, You need to be having fun in what you do. If you're not, and I know people who've spent an entire career not enjoying what they do, and that for me is one of life's great tragedies. If you're not excited to get out of bed every day, you're in the wrong job and you need to go and find something else to do. So enjoy it, have fun and be yourself. They would be my main topics for aspiring leaders of the future. Brilliant. Thank you. Marianne, it's uh, it's been a, a great conversation. You've shared some really, really useful leadership insights. Uh, I feel inspired off the back of our conversation. There's been quite a few things that you've highlighted that I thought to myself, yeah, that's that's stuff that I need to go away and uh, and think about as uh, as well. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your uh, uh, sharing your your perspective on your leadership insights. It's uh, It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thanks so much, Simon. It's been good to talk to you. Thank you.